morning everybody hi how are you hi everyone we're now live on facebook youtube and workplace any question or comments you may want to share just type it in the chat box or question box. Hi, good morning. Long, you're in. So as I said, we're now live on Facebook, YouTube, and Workplace. So just type in your comments in the chat box. Shasan, Mr. Antonio, good morning. Yes, good morning po sa lahat. Everybody, magandang umago po sa inyong lahat. I hope we are all well and healthy. So, there are already people getting in. Morning, Dr. Olaer. The program will start in about five minutes. Mm I choose to find myself in the 
place where my dreams are beautifully shaped and nurtured. A haven of true knowledge and light. A place where I learn to live my life. Situated next to the Philippines' fleet of power, with campuses in the country's major hubs of business and commerce, culture and history, Centro Escolar University is the place where the highest forms of human thought, talent, and creativity blend together for a unique learning experience. The Scholarian education is anchored on the university's twin philosophy, Scientia e Virtù, science and virtue, the pursuit of knowledge guided by the highest ideals of humanity. The Scholarian education produces graduates who are empowered by timely knowledge and skills and inspired by timeless virtues to contribute to human and societal development.
This is where my dreams are set in motion and begin to turn into reality. The ultimate place of an unforgettably exciting and life-changing education. CEU is my choice, my future, my move. everyone good morning we shall begin our webinar for today with an invocation to be led by the ceu singers manila this will be followed by the singing of the philippine national anthem Dr. Maria Cristina D. Padolina, the Administrative Council, the Management Council, faculty, non-teaching personnel, and students, good morning. 
I'm Chitsa Longa, your host for today. It is an honor and privilege for me to welcome you in today's webinar on gender sensitivity, promoting diversity and respect in the workplace. Today's webinar shall provide us awareness on how the CEU community can become more gender sensitive, gender responsive, and gender friendly. Without further ado, colleagues, students, please join me in welcoming our present and Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Maria Cristina Di Padulina for her opening remarks. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Salonga, for hosting this. Uh, good morning to the CEU community and uh, friends of uh, CEU who may also be joining us today. Uh, and of course, to the entire CEU community. We're very glad to be uh, to welcome you to this uh, very important seminar that we are having. And uh, we would like to thank, first of all, the organizers of this uh, seminar, webinar, as we call them now, uh, promoted, first of all, by the Human Resource uh, Department of our university, headed by our Assistant Vice President for Administration, Dr. Bel Fabian. And of course, she is supported by her staff as well as uh, the other offices, the offices of Dr. Salonga uh, in guidance and counseling and our support staff, our technical support staff, without whom we would not be able to carry out this uh, webinar. Maraming salamat sa inyo. I know it takes a lot to coordinate all of these things while we are in our separate uh, places of uh, of um, of operations, but you are all doing wonderfully and our webinars are getting better and better for CEU. Thank you very much for all your efforts. Uh, the um, gender sensitivity uh, in for CEU is something that should be part of our, what, our, our, our entire um, operations and our way of thinking, uh, especially because our philosophy, Ciencia y Virtud, is one that would really guide us in being sensitized to the gender, um, to the concerns of various genders in our community. Uh, because we are, we should be aware that we, when we talk about gender sensitivity, this would involve knowledge and virtue. So science and virtue, our philosophy. We need to know uh, about uh, the various um, characteristics of the different genders that we, uh, of, of the people that we work with. We need to know, um, uh, their sensitivities. Uh, we need to also uh, know the issues that uh, they face. Uh, we need to know the problems that they encounter in the workplace or in the school or even in their own communities. So now that is the science that we need to know about this. And of course, uh, the science itself of the various uh, um, uh, uh, genders and uh, being in science myself and in chemistry, we know that some of the um, uh, characteristics of the different genders arise from the different chemistries of the bodies of our people. Then, of course, we need to be, uh, after we have that knowledge and that science uh, in that we know that, uh, we need to be guided by some values. We need to be able to empathize uh, with our people. We need to um, uh, have the etiquette and the manners to deal with them sensitively. And we need to be able to build trust and respect among all of us. And actually, it's not just the 
majority of the genders, the, the traditional female and the traditional female me, male, who have to have that kind of understanding and that kind of respect. The other members also of the different genders have to also understand the uh, sensitivities of the traditional males and uh, females. I just use the word traditional, uh, the ones that we uh, are more uh, familiar with. And I'm very glad that I think we also have the Centro Escolar Integrated School um, faculty with us and hopefully also from the basic education department of Centro Escolar Las Piñas because we know that this um, empathy and this knowledge have to be there from the have, have, has to be start, has to be started with the young ones so that they grow up already having the knowledge and having the sensitivity to to deal with uh, this uh, in 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 their lives. So thank you very much to our organizers for uh, doing this. Uh, and of course, we thank you very much, Dr. Ricardo Guanzon, all the way from Mar Mariano Marcos uh, State uh, University, where I used to have some associations when I was in the Commission on Higher Education. Thank you very much, Dr. Guanzon, for sharing with us your expertise and your time. So let's uh, go on and start. And I hope from this, we will derive uh, certain practices in our university that will lead to make us more sensitive to the gender uh, around, genders around us. Maraming salamat. Welcome to everyone. Thank you, Chit. Thank you, Dr. Padelino, for that message on how the CEU community can be truly gender sensitive. Before we go further, let me inform you all that we are now live on Facebook, YouTube, and Workplace. You can enter your questions and comments in the chat or question box of these platforms. At this point, I shall now turn the time over to our invited speaker for today. But first, let me introduce you, introduce him to all of you. Our speaker, who is very dynamic and bold spirited, comes from Asingan, Pangasinan, with one son and with roots in Sinait, Ilocos Sur, and Sagay, Negros Occidental. He is currently the Dean of the College of Medicine, Mariano Marcos State University of the City of Batac, Ilocos Norte. He is an alumnus of UP for his bachelor's degree in psychology and doctor of medicine. He had received awards in his postgraduate studies, such as Academic Excellence Award, and University Valedictorian in his Master's in Educational Management. He received citations for academic excellence in EDD in Guidance and Counseling and PhD in Developmental Studies. He was Class Valedictorian in the Base Medical Service Officers course at the Armed Forces of the Philippines, took up evidence-based medicine at the University College in London, guest editor of the British Medical Journal, also in London, and have had training in cognitive behavior therapy at the Bex Institute, Philadelphia, USA. I knew we were together in that training. His most recent award is the Jose Rizal Memorial Award for being one of the top three most distinguished physicians of 2020 given by the Philippine Medical Association. My dear friends, please join me in welcoming Dr. Ricardo Sotelo Guanzon.
Hello, uh, good morning to everyone and thank you Ma'am Chit for the generous introduction. And I would like to thank everyone, especially the University President, Dr. Maria Cristina Padolina for that very enlightening opening remarks. And of course, the rest of the Administrative Council uh, who are, uh, of course, we have Dr. Roda, Roda Aguilar, the University Registrar. Dr. Maria Flordelisa Anastasio, the VP and Dean of Studies for Malolos. Dr. Bella Marie Alfabian, as the Assistant VP for Administration. Dr. Olivia Limuaco, the VP and Dean of Studies for Makati. Dr. Carlito B. Olaer, the VP for Student Affairs. Jericho Orlina, the Assistant VP for Business Affairs. The Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Teresa R. Perez. The BP for Administration and Accounting, uh, Ma'am uh, Rolina S. Servitilio. The Treasurer, Mr. Cesar F. Tan. Dr. Emma V. Yabut, the Vice President for Research and Evaluation. I would like to thank the uh, CEU Administrative Council for this very timely and very important event in the university because we have to be, as what the president said, not only aware, sensitive, but to practice what everyone in the country has been doing, both from the government and the private sector. I hope that uh, the, the topic, which is gender and development, is a very extensive one. And there have been several webinars before and until now ongoing that will help our people in the academe to address this issue because this is a very important one. And uh, hopefully you can learn a few things in my um, presentation today. But as it is a very extensive one, I hope to touch at least uh, the basic or the important ones. And for the rest, maybe I can just upload some of the materials that were actually generously given by my university and the Philippine Commission for Women and the other institutions of the government which generally share their particular um, topics or fields of interest with respect to GAD. Okay. Slide. So gender and development, of course, there are basic concepts and there are several things that we need to know uh, when we are dealing with GAD. <clears throat> similar to what has been presented here as well. So we would like to look at uh, certain um, directional requirements and those other things on how and what to do with these things. So foundational slides, okay, the uh, things. Gender and development, development, of which I had my uh, uh, PhD before in development studies, it's a perspective and a process that is, of course, participatory, empowering because everybody's part of it, equitable sees to it that we all get uh, the things that we need, sustainable, it will continue, it should make us understand freedom from <laughs> violence, respectful of human rights, actualization of human potentials. It seeks to achieve gender equality as a fundamental value that should be reflected, of course, as what the president said, in development choices in our policies in the university. It contends that women are active agents of development. Of course, we have to start with what sex is all about. This is basically a biologic difference between the male and the female. It is something that is universal. And when we mean gender, we refer to a socially constructed social relations between women and men and the relationship between women, men, girls, and boys. Gender roles are dynamic, which actually means it changes over time as the need of society, as the need of the people change over time. Gender socialization is something that is very important. And if I remember in my uh, undergraduate years on this uh, critical period of imprinting, when we try to um, a certain stage in our life, there are certain uh, conditions or events that are actually perceived and retained most. So similar to this, gender socialization is something that the child 
will actually be uh, immersed with the, he tries to or she tries to learn about the norms, the traditions, behaviors associated in our assigned sex, usually during childhood. So there are several agents and institutions of change. Of course, we have uh, the most important one now are the two formal curriculum in the school and uh, for the ones in religious teaching. Okay. So, power and relationship role. So, it's very, very important. Power over, you know, power to, power with. These are actually powers that actually are within us, how to deal with other people, how we command them, and of course, uh, how to cooperate with others. Because this is very important in our interpersonal relationship with other people. Sex roles, these are basically general set of expectations attached to being a man or a woman okay on the other hand gender roles these are learned behaviors in a given society or community or other special group like for example in the lgbtq or in whatever um uh, agrupation you are in these are conditions which act with activities and responsibilities that will be perceived as being male or being female the world of work, of course, basically, if you can see on the extreme end here on the left, on my left side, the male's productive role and the female's reproductive role, which are, if I may, they are actually stereotyping. So productive involves producing goods and services for consumption. This includes paid work and even those that you do not get paid for, but you have to do your role for work. Reproductive, on the other hand, involves care and maintenance of the household and its members, including child burying and caring for children, food prep, and the like. Community role, of course, is the collective organizations of social events and services. Stereotyping of case, this is very, very important because as uh, the president again said a while ago, the traditional view of things, of course. So if you say that men are better than women, we stereotype all men and all women. If you say that all women like to cook, we stereotype them. We assign gender roles for sex roles. And sometimes they are, or more often than not, they are uh, uh, positively reinforced, meaning to say we tend to ascribe to that behavior and that behavior tends to repeat itself. Sexual orientations, stereotypes are also very common. So when we say marginalization, we refer to the process of pushing a particular group or people or group of people to the edge of society by not allowing them an active voice, identity, or place in it. So they are like insignificant. On the other hand, subordination is an act of giving someone or something less importance of power. Now where is this more um, uh, pronounced than in Philippine history and also in... Uh, of course, during the Spanish era when women were not allowed to go to school, so they were like, you are only good for the home or for the house. Gender bias is manif manifested in the manner in which uh, uh, we describe the situation of women who perform paid work outside of the domestic sphere, meaning to say staying at home, doing uh, washing clothes, uh, homemaking and the like. So the women especially have a lot of this burden. On the other hand, we talk of gender-based violence. So it involves the abuse of power. And of course, you have your unequal power relationship. Ah, si nanay, si tatay, nag-aaway siya kasi gusto ng ama, siya lang ang masusunod. Ganon din yung ina na kung minsan dominante, ayaw ng ang asawa ay sabi natin driver, si ma'am ay nasa opisina. No? So nagkakaroon ng problema po dyan. So any harmful act that is perpetrated against a person's will. So ito yung mga nari-rape, yung battery. Uh, uh, they do a lot of violence. No? They stalk and they even bully people. So for some uh, today, which is uh, uh, has a bearing on this particular topic, tinawag natin siya karamihan dyan, violence against women because a lot of studies would show that the women are the ones on the receiving end with respect to this. Why do we need to implement gender and development? Uh, you can see that 
our general appropriations acts at the uh, for the minimum 5% of it at least 5% will be used for god program so we have organizations such as the sidao okay uh, and dami nito we will be discussing it uh, shortly but if you try to look at the pyramid no hindi lang yung pyramid nung panahon namin ni na ma'am chief yung pyramid ni yung nagtotoning no ito yung pyramid dito yung compliance hindi makarelate yung mga bata kasi hindi nila nadat na yung panahon na yon no compliance commitment and obligation so we are obliged to do it we have to make a commitment and then when we make a commitment we monitor if we are really doing it so development aims to fulfill three basic human needs to provide for basic necessities the ability to become persons with identity dignity and self esteem the exercise of freedom and responsibility ano to ito yung kung anong gusto mong maging nakukuha mo at kung anong gusto mong meaning to say you have access to all the resources you are not limited by education or sex and the like of course depende yon kung saan ka pupunta kasi kung minsan may educational qualification what we're just trying to say is when we really talk of development you have full access to your actualization kung anong mga plano mo at pwede mong gawin para sa sarili at sa lipunan so development should increase the availability and widen the distribution of basic life sustaining goods ibig sabihin you may have goods ang tanong nabibili ba ito ng bala na can you have access to this o baka limited lang ito no and then of course we also raise the levels not only of, of our economic status but we increase our to, uh, our betterment for education and there is greater attention to humanistic and cultural values enhancing self esteem ito na ngayon nagiging problema ngayon ng gender and development and the lgbtq community because they seem to have been uh, victims or or a focus of a lot of uh, unsavory or unpleasant experiences we expand the range of social and economic choices of individuals by freeing them from servitude and dependence not only in relation to other people of course well this is not part of uh, ceu because we are a private institution um, be that as it may we need to have to develop our human resources we need to reduce poverty and then participatory governance and economic development and the like so actually this goes even for the private sector infrastructure security justice and peace and of course the way we adapt to climate change which actually is the one bearing on us uh, which we have seen in the last few typhoons that we have had in the country so how do we do this there is one strategy we call gender mainstreaming so what is this it's a global strategy that government all over the world pursues to ensure equality in all aspects of the development process for both genders of course we look at it more comprehensively as the relationship between men and women in their access and control over resources kaya bang bilhin ng kung sino ng lalaki at babae ang pwedeng bilhin ng bawat isa that means equality in the access control over resources wala na nung panahon namin nung ako ay elementary may mga wanted ad nakalagay wanted male o wanted female bawal na ho yan because the sexes have delivered the goods we now have doctors minsan nga mas marami na babae we now have nurses na dati puro babae ang dami ng lalaki pati nga midwife kaya nga palagay ko eh, ba, dapat baguhin na yun no? mid person kaya kasi meron ng mid husband kaya di ba so hindi ko alam no uh, our society has its changing mores culture and norms so makikita natin ito and the transformation of these institutional structures including culture and practices must be seen in all institutions like CEU MMSU or maybe other institutions higher of higher learning look at this this is a very uh uh busy slide okay this is a very busy slide we have to start of course with uh, uh gender blindness 
And at the extreme end, we have gender accountability. Try to see where we where we are. Okay. When we say gender blind, we fail to recognize the roles and responsibilities of women and men ascribed to or imposed by social culture, by the norms, both in the economic and in the political arena. So we turn a blind eye to them, literally. No. But when we are aware of these differences, we sabi natin siyang gender awareness, society is aware of their perspectives, of this perspective of gender roles and understand how it has affected your or our um, uh, need for employing or getting these people. We compare, ilang ba ang babae talaki? Have we admitted on the basis of the gender or sexes? Gender sensitivity, on the other hand, ito na yung sinasabi natin na we aim to understand, oy sensitive siya, naiintindihan niya, no? Societal and cultural factors involved in gender-based exclusion, wanted driver, male. Wala na ngayon yan. Wanted driver, kasi even females can actually drive and sometimes even better. So, we do not discriminate in both the public and private sector. And this is the most... Uh, 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 or the better part of addressing gender sensitivity. It is not enough to be sensitive. We must be responsive. No? Uh, being gender responsive is a perspective and it requires process of overcoming uh, historical gender biases. Yung dati na, and of course you have seen that, kasi before, I, I hope your people will not mind. No? Uh, before kasi may school for men or boys, may school for girls. Ngayon wala na. We... Uh, Ang tawag noong unang panahon nung nandun pa ako sa University of the Philippines, naging co-educational ang tawag nila noong co-ed. No? Nawala na yan. So everybody saw na we cannot limit education to a certain sector of society. Let's open it to everyone. Okay. Yan yung being gender responsive. Of course, gender fair and equal is when you, there is an uh, equal access, ease of access of both genders to whatever state a certain sector is in both in the private and in the government sector. And of course, to the most extreme, to you, to my right, will be gender accountability. When we have the obligation and the responsibility, not only on the part of the state, but even in the private sector. We implement gender mainstreaming. And while we implement, sabi nga ng management plan, implement, monitor, evaluate. No, We have to do all those when we are doing that then we say we are gender accountable. The Philippine Commission, uh, you can see it here, uh, on women have this handbook that we can use or we can get from them. They have given this to several institutions, both in the local sectors and in the rather in the government and private sector. So we have seen this a while ago. So what should be done? Okay, what should be done? The assumption is that everyone benefits from the same support when we mean equality. There are three basic concepts that we would like to present to everyone. Equality, equity, and justice. Try to see this one. When you give the same support regardless of the status of the person, like you give like 10% to everyone or so much for all, no? the same benefit given the same support, then we are practicing equality. But look, even equality is not enough because this person on the right is compromised. So what we did, we thought of equity. When we mean equity, everyone gets the support they need. So this one is a tall guy. This one is a short person. So what do we do? We give him more so that they can, he or she can have the same vantage point or viewpoint of, or, or rather vantage point or area of um, vision of what is going on because there is a barrier there. So when we do that, we are doing an equitable distribution. It depends now on the need of every person to achieve a certain outcome or objective. So kung hindi ka makapanood, dahil maliit ka, Kailangan mo ng doblet pambatas para makita mo yung palaro na nagaganap. Hindi ba yung mga estudyante ganyan, no? Kailangan yung iba naman, pumapatong na ito, 
pumapatong sa shoulder nito nung <laughs> yung Pilipino type. Hindi kaya, wala nito. Pumatong na lang. Nakikishare ka na lang para kadalawa kayong nakakakita ito papatong dito sa balikat. So, mga estudyante ganyan, hindi makita, patong na lang ako dyan. No? Ngayon, when we talk of justice, which is actually the highest form, when we try to do breaking the barrier of access to everything, you remove the source of inequity. Of course, uh, Uh, you address rather the source of uh, the problem of equality and inequity. So what do you do? This fence, which is actually obstructing the view of those who are short, you remove that or change it without removing the barrier. You change it to something where you can see through it. So when we do address this barrier, modify it so everybody can have access to what is going on, then we are delivering what we call justice. Of course, when you have that, what happens? Don't just tell a different version of the same story. Make it your story. Let's go to the left. So when they have equality, this guy will have a different version of the story because he can even see the view below. And he will have a wider angle of looking at things. No? But let's go to the extreme. This guy, of course, sinuerte, no? They were given the same treatment across population or across group. Meron naman siyang butas na nakikita. So nakikita niya siguro si Pitcher. Yung batter hindi na niya makita. So yun ang istorya niya. It's like saying the same story of the half full and the half empty glass. Diba? It depends on which story you want to make your story. Be a pessimist or be an optimist. Yung basong kalahat yung laman, sabi ng isang optimist, half full. Sabi ng pessimist, half empty. So our story is what I call perspective. In fact, in anthropology, we call them the concept of the ethics and the emic, the insider perspective and the outsider perspective. So sa equity, we give so much no, for the need of this short person. So when, instead of giving just one box, we give them two, him or her, we practice equity. Pare-pareho sila ng point of view they can see. Hindi naman pareho from that particular sense kasi ito ang kanyang center, uh, ang angle ng kanyang vision. Ito naman yung isa. So this person will have more stories that he can see or uh, hear and this person can see more stories that is uh, seen here. But yung kanina is equity and then justice. Meron pa rin barrier. Ito yung ginagawa ng gobyerno at ng mga universidad. No? Why don't we just remove the barrier so everybody can have a good story of what they have seen? We call that liberation. And sa gender and development, ito yung stereotyping, kaso ganyan ka dapat, nakita kang ganyan. Hindi ka makakilos kasi baka may sabihin ng lipunan, baka may sabihin ng pamilya, baka may sabihin ng gobyerno, baka may sabihin yung kumpanya. You remove those barriers. When we remove them, then we liberate our folks. Now, look at the gender issues are deterrent to development. So it is important to address them in dev plan. It is important for dev practitioners to determine practical and strategic needs. Ano ba yung kailangan, no? doing or born out of gender analysis so that appropriate interventions will impact and benefit both men and women. So ang tanong, ito ba when you try to make a policy, will it exclude others, especially if it has something to do with gender? If it does, then that is a problem. You need to gender mainstream. The God approach seeks not only to integrate women into development, but to look for the potential in development initiatives. We transform unequal gender relations and empower women. We give them the same access. We give them the same um, conditions for all. So, gender development is a perspective. Pananaw ito. No? Tinitingnan natin ang iba't ibang kakayanan, kakanyahan, at ibang mga kalinangan at kagalingan ng parehong lalaki at babae. It is recognizing that gender biases impede development. So, hindi tayo pwedeng maging gender biased na Paboran lang ito at saka ito. And I would like to say, including, of course, the LGBTQ, no? 
we we have reflected a change in the way we look at men, women, and the third party, if I may, no? If we do gender development, we need to address the inequality that is going on between women and men. And if I say, sabi ko nga, even the LGBTQ. So how do we address them? We make a deliberate method of addressing them. In the processes of developing, kailangan may budgeting, implementing, monitor. Ito yung management uh, tools, no? Hindi lang ito kasi tayo ay nasa private go, uh, private uh, institution. Of course, particularly in government kasi sila yung unang magsusulong. Tayo sa privado, sasama tayo tutulong because we need to help our studentry and our faculty as well. So, hindi naman siya war of the sexes. Nag-aaway ba yung lalaki at babae dyan? Hindi rin naman siya anti-male, no? Puro babae na lang ba pinapaboran? Sabi nga natin, both. So, it is not pitting women against men. Of course, ito yung sinasabi natin, no? Kapag ikaw ay lalaki or babae, yan yung sinasabi ko, kasabihin ko na, there's such a thing as gender identity, gender expression, yung mga ganyan, magkakaiba po yung mga yon. So, we stereotype them, no? Pag nakita natin, meron kagad tayong point of view, ano yan? No? It is not role reversal, but rather understanding relationships. What God is telling us, gender issues affect women and men differently. Siyempre, no, magkaiba yung epekto nito. Especially, buti nga, meron na ngayon parity ng pantay. Dati, kapag nagbuntis si ma, meron siyang, anong tawag dito, maternity leave. Wait, nagbigay na rin ng pater. That one, paternity leave, part ng God mainstreaming po yan. Pero, siyempre, si nanay ang naghirap uh, kasi siya yung nagdalang tao, din siya yung nagbuntis at nanganak. So look at this, when we do practice God, of course we sharpen our focus on development of people. Lahat sila, regardless of their gender or their sexes, they are all part of it. Ang sabi nga nito, inclusivity. It enhances the capacities of women and men to contribute to the attainment of development goals. So hindi mo titignan kung anong klaseng kasarian ba ito no? o uh, meron. Kaya niya, ibigay niya, no? It reduces social inequities, sabi ko nga kanina, stemming from unequal gender relations. No? Uh, ang dami niyan sa ating lipunan na unti-unting tinanggal at natanggal na nga yung iba. So development is for everybody regardless of your profession or your career. No? From the sundalo, to the nurse, to the doctor, to the teacher, ayan siya, to the PWD. Fairness and equity demands that everyone in society, whether male or female, has the right to the same opportunities to achieve a full and satisfying life. Everybody should have equal access. So from theory to practice, what do we do? Uh, of course, um, uh, wag na ito, no? Punta tayo dito. The practices in the main scene determines of sino yung bibigyan at sino yung kailangan tulungan, no? Kung minsan kasi yung mainstream, ayan yung kalakaran ngayon, hindi pantay ang pagtingin, no? Kailangan kapag lalaki ka, ikaw maghahanap buhay, kapag babae ka, ikaw ang nasa bahay, hindi ka pwede magtrabaho, no? Yan yung mainstream, pero I think at this point in time, even the students and faculty will agree with me, mukhang hindi na totoo yan, no? Kasi kung minsan nga, mas marami pang babaeng nagtatrabaho, si tatay ang naiiwan sa bahay. They had this Beijing platform for action before, no? It endorsed gender mainstreaming as a strategy to ensure that a gender perspective is reflected in all policies, programs at the national, regional, and international levels. So before decisions are made, we do what we call an analysis on men and women. Pag ito bang proyekto na ito, ginawa ko, sabi sa development studies no, nung nag-aaral pa ako, if you do a certain project, the first square would be who will be put to a disadvantage and who will be made poorer. Yan yung unang tanong pag development specialist ka eh. Dito naman, gender mainstreaming, pag ginawa mo ito, sinong maaape? Si babae, si lalaki, o si third sex? Pwede ba? Are we trying to put one over the other? Pinag-aaway ba sila? Or are we trying to make a decision based on genders? Hindi pwede, sabi ng Beijing Platform for Action. So they emphasize two aspects ito, requiring the integration of equality concerns into the analysis and formulations of policies. We 
kinukutuhan natin yung pulisiya no uh, pag ginawa ba natin ito meron bang maaapi meron bang mapapaburan yan yung sinasabi dito it includes the interest needs and experiences and visions of women no yung kanila bang pananaw kung ano ang dapat gawin of have we or are we considering them yan yung mga development approach no policies and programs para makita natin itong agenda for god is good for the university Of course, uh, sinabi ko na ito kanina, uh, inuulit lang dito. It in- includes gender perspective in the design and implementation of plans and programs to carry out organizational mandates. I think uh, some universities, uh, including CEU and Ateneo and some others, have really hired people not on the basis of their gender but on the basis of their capacity and capability to teach. or to know or, or their competency and skills in, of course, uh, delivering the goods in the educational sector. Gender mainstreaming, of course, you have to balance. No? Kailangan pantay sila sa lahat ng bagay. Eh, sabi ko nga kanina, kasama na din dito yung LGBTQ. So when we do that, make gender equality as a fundamental value in development choices and institutional practice. So sabi ko, noong unang panahon, wanted male. Wala na yung mga yon. Dapat nga rin tanggalin eh. Meron nung panahon ko nakalagay with pleasing personality. Para namang ang mga tao wala ng pleasing per- Everybody has a pleasing personality. In fact, being a doctor of medicine, bawal nang hindi maganda at gwapo ngayon sa dami ng pwedeng gamitin. Salamat po doktor, mga ulay, kung ano-ano yan. So, that is superficial actually. But what it is trying to communicate is we have leveled the playing field. Pareho na, pantay-pantay na. Yun ang... Uh, subliminal ano niya, no, message na, ah, pwede na pala. Regardless, that's what I'm trying to say. Hence, to gen- generally equal, no, kaganitong slide ko, no, we have to pursue, look at who is at the center and who is mainstream, meaning to say, who is at the margin. Kailangan wala yun, no? So, these are several strategies. Philippine Gender Mainstreaming Strategy, in our development planning. The ADCO, um, Administrative Council of um, CEU will be looking into that or actually they have started on it. Then it will be institutionalized. We develop it so that we address what this government or even the community of nations have been harping for in the last several years na pantay-pantay ang tingin sa lahat. Of course, uh, you can have this wheel where you can, uh, of course, start and make your own policy and look at the people, uh, try to have a survey what kind of people you have in your institution. Look at the programs and projects and activities. Are they balanced for everyone or is it inclusive without uh, marginalizing others? And what mechanisms? Meron ba tayong ginawa? Maybe um, uh, policies that will give us uh, um, re- positive reinforcement if you do things right. but I do want to call it penalty naman dun sa iba. Maybe try to reassess if there are still needs to reprogram and change what we have been doing. Yan po yung gender mainstreaming na kung saan pwede tayong pumasok at magsimula. Ah, pag-aaralan namin ito. No? Itong opisina na ito, puro lalaki sila. Anong nangyari? Uh, wala bang na dito? Yung mga ganon, no? Ito pa. So when we plan, uh, ito siya yung sinasabi kong uh, management tool. Andito yung mga tao, yung programa mo, yung mechanisms and policies. We all do all these things while looking at where where to process. Ano ba yung area na dapat tingnan? Ito yung mga tools na ginawa ng uh, uh, mga ibang tao, ng gobyerno, on how to do gender mainstreaming evaluation. No? So ito yung GM, tawagin nila ay GMF tool. Ito yung how do we uh, do mainstreaming. Of course, we have to look at studies, anong meron, anong nandyan na tayo, anong naitayo na. Then we try to integrate mechanisms to enhance, to stabilize. And then while looking at it, okay, let's start to apply it. Maybe for next semester, gawin na natin ito. Look at the institutions, uh, maybe the HR, maybe the department or the colleges. Ano yung pwede nilang idagdag para part of the institutional development siya. And then if it is all right, then we try to look at it. Pwede pala. Anong sabi nila sa iba't ibang universities? 
we can replicate the best practices of other institutions because anyway, it is for everyone to learn from or to learn at so that we can look at how to develop our own or how to improve. Uh, ito naman yung sinasabi ko na ginawa ng, ano, no, ng uh, PCW, naggawa, nagbigay sila ng gantimpala. Sana tayo din sa, ano, sa CEU, no, yung mga estudyante, gumawa kayo ng proyekto, maski tayo ay naka-online. Ano sa palagay ninyo ang isang sektor o gawain sa universidad na maski tayo ay naka-digital or online? Ang pwede nating iproyekto para, sorry for the taglist, no? to address the, the the needs of the university to show na we are god sensitive god aware and god practicing pwede nating gawin ng mga estudyante ang gumawa kay ng anong programa na kung pwede at ipakita sa ating mga administrasyon na ma'am sir pwede naman pala po itong gawin no? so it, nagbigay sila sa mga government sector ito yung binigyan nila na nagpa-practice daw ng god so These were the identified uh, government uh, areas. So, ito yung kanilang awarding that time. So, the major challenges in gender mainstreaming in the Philippines is policy. Do we have a God agenda to serve as guide for the agency? Or three agencies need to sustain capacities of yung inyong God focal persons. No, Meron ba silang sustainability? Do we have policy to sustain that? No, And then, do we have enablers? No, Meron ba tayong pagsuporta both uh, human resources, uh, financial resource, program resource no. So uh, and of course there's a need to conduct gender impact. Kumusta naman no? Uh, other than equalizing gender accessibility and uh, of course ease of doing business with all of uh, those people regardless of the gender, does it address poverty? Does it address economic development? So, ito yung mga managers, uh, mga estudyante siguro, hindi interesado dito. But maybe for your own sake, sa inyong mismong level na magkakaibigan, pwede nyo gawin ito. No? We analyze and transform the, the, the mainstream. Hindi tayo kinikilala, dapat magpakilala tayo. We challenge the issues to redistribute power both in the institutional, national, and global political economy. Kailangan marinig nila tayo na ito ang ating tinig at ito ang ating gustong mangyari. Because nobody can speak better than you. Than you. Ang tawag natin dyan is gender identity for me which is similar to what I'm saying. Actually, kapag pwede nating sabihin kung ano ang kailangan natin, on another note, it's a parallelism na ang gender identity, walang pwedeng magsabi kung sino ka. Ikaw lang kasi ang gender ID, it's only you who knows yourself. So similar to this, kung ano yung needs ninyo, then that's the time that you express, eto kami, these are our needs to make gender mainstreaming. Be creative and innovative. No? Sabi ko nga, there are a thousand and one ways of skinning a cat no? or, or doing something. So we devise solutions. We try to look at pwede bang indigenous material. Let us go to COVID. Sabi ng COVID, kailangan natin ng moderna vaccine. Sabi ng COVID, kailangan natin social distancing. Kailangan ng 1 to 2 meters, face mask, face shield, quarantine. Anong creativity ng government at ng ating bayan? Nag-invento sila. Tinignan nila yung Tuklas Lunas na programa. Tinignan nila yung NIH programa ng UP. Sinubukan nila ngayon. They are doing a clinical trial of Lagundi and they are trying to look at VCO of virgin coconut oil kasi they discovered na ang VCO pwede pala ng may lauric acid, it, merong medium chain triglyceride, it increases immunity, antibacterial, and the like. So that is part of being creative and innovative Now we really do not have to rely everything on foreign government or foreign resources. Similarly, when we try to look at creativity and innovativeness no, in gender mainstreaming, pwede ba tayo sa sarili natin at ano yung gender impacts and result, no? So, yung mga nagko-cross-dress, yung transgender, pwede bang may ibang sistema o na hindi kailangan saktan sila? Ano bang pwedeng gawin? At yung mga babae na nag-aapira ko kuminsan sa mga cases, uh, battered wife, domestic violence, it has been going on. I've been appearing in court for the last 20 years and it has not changed. It, they have not changed yung mga issue. 
Tingnan natin. So, we develop technical gender expertise across all sectors. And of course, the most important is in economic development, that is poverty reduction. Yung mga academician na nandiyan ngayon sa eskwelahan, we try to do research and analysis and look at how are we doing. No, Look at the implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. Meron ba tayong napapala? Baka naman ginawa natin ito, laki ng budget, limang tao lang ang, ano, no, ang nag-benefit. No? But we try to look at, is this the surrogate measure or the actual outcome that we are trying to measure? So sabi nila, why GWI, gender issues affect everyone. Ito nga yung sinasabi nila, women empowerment and gender equality. Everyone who believes in the vision of attaining a full and satisfying life for all has an obligation to help God. No? Why? We are mandated by international, sinabi ko nga kanina, the Beijing platform, the CEDAW, I'm sorry for this, nagkagulo yung slide ko. No? So we need to, we are the custodians of people's trust and resources, lalo na sa academe. Let us be a good inspiration and example to our people because we have the capacity, knowledge, skills, resources. Ano yun? Magaling ang, akad, ang, aka, ang mga academics saan? Critical thinking ability. Marunong mag-sort out yan ng bakit meron ito, bakit meron yan. No? Then gagamitan nila na statistics. Mukhang hindi sa significant o significant. Yan yung mga teachers natin, no? Kaya mga estudyante, kaya nag-aaral ng statistics. Kailangan maipresent, no? Nang matino, na ilan ang, ilan ang nakinabang, ilan ang hindi nakinabang, gagamit tayo ng stat, no? Maybe even sim simple measures of central tendency, kung ano may sa statistics sinasabi na yan, no? Yung average ng kumita, yung average number of people na nabahaginan ng distribution ng mga relief goods, So what can we do? Napunta ako sa relief goods. We are talking about uh, uh, gender and development kasi everybody should have equal access. We respect every person, individual, regardless of age, ability, physical or mental. That includes PWDs, no? belief, religion, educational attainment, race, ethnic group, status in society, marital status, region of origin, color, sexual orientation, ayun yung sinasabi ko kanina, and gender identity. We recognize that there is inequality in the home, in the community, and institutions which need to be changed. We apply gender lens in fulfilling our tasks in our institution to examine and assess differential needs of both men and women. Ano bang kailangan nila to level the playing field? Sabi ko nga, you either do equitable distribution, you either do justice, or you liberate. Thank you. So this actually came from the PCW, and of course, I would like to give credit to Ma'am Marita for sharing this particular slide. Um, so next, uh, Can I just briefly run through another slide, of course, before we go into the Q&A? Of course, uh, let us go to the violence against women, uh, the other one. Hello, uh, is it all right Welcome. if I continue or we can have a two-minute break? Po? Uh, what do you think, Ma'am Chip? So be, before we continue, let's pause for a while for an intermission number from the CU Singers Manila. And the song is My Love. It's not the flowers wrapped in fancy paper. It's not the ring I wear around my finger. It's nothing in all the world I need when I have you here beside me. Here beside me. So you could give me wings to In your arms 
And all that my heart could ever want has come true. So you could give me wings to fly, catch me if I fall, or pull the stars down from the skies, so I could wish on them all. But I couldn't ask for more, 'cause your love is too great. Gave me everything when you gave your heart to me. Catch me if I fall, or pull the stars down from the sky, so I can be sure they're all. But I couldn't ask for more, 'cause your love was too great. correct myself. The title of the song is Your Love. And I think of in love, my love. Okay, there you have it. That was truly a nice so, song. Muna, di ka ka na. Moving on, let me call back our webinar speaker on screen. Take it away, Dr. Guanzon. Hello. Uh, yes, uh, Good morning again. So I hope that you have actually um, made um, got some ideas with the presentation that that we did this morning. So the choir made a very beautiful song, and it's very um, enlivening and um, you know uh, refreshing to hear them. That our students are still uh, very much engaged for for the things that we've been doing. So our next topic has something to do with uh, violence against women. Unfortunately, I did not put it into a slide, but uh, rather uh, change it into a PowerPoint that is more um, uh, pleasing to the eye. So this is actually more of a legal um, presentation on uh, how things we, we have been doing uh, our things. Okay, so uh, let, uh, let me check the screen. Okay. Wait. Uh, oh, my screen disappeared. Wait. Can you spare me a few minutes? Uh, a few seconds. So, where is that? Well, later, uh, again, you can type your questions or comments in our chat box. So since we are live on Facebook, live on uh, Workplace and uh, YouTube, please type your comments and questions so that uh, later we will have Q&A portion for Dr. Guanzon to answer all of them. 
uh, presentation. It's going to be very brief. This one is briefer because we just wanted to know so what is being done. We have a Republic Act 9262 enacted, which is your anti-violence against women law. So let us just get a few uh, concepts or ideas about this. So um, you have your uh, VAW, your an app defining violence against women and their children, providing for protective measures for victims, prescribing penalties, therefore, and for other purposes. So the declaration of the policy, sabi niya on section 2, it is hereby declared that the state values the dignity of women and children and guarantees full respect for human rights. And the state recognizes the need to protect the family and its members, particularly women and children, from violence and threats to their personal safety and security. So, meron palang batas na magpaparusa pag meron gagawin ng isang tao when you commit violence against women. So, uh, hindi na natin mabasahin ito. Ang sinasabi lang niya dito na... Uh, the state is exerting effort to address this violence committed against women and children. So, ano yung sinasabing violence against women? No? Ito yung or children. Any act or a series of act committed by any person against a woman who is his wife, former wife, or against a woman with whom the person has or had sexual or dating relationship, or with whom he has a common child, no? nagkaanak or against her child, whether legitimate or not, within or without the family abode, nakatira o kasama sa bahay, maski hindi, which result in or is likely to result in physical, tingnan ninyo yun, sexual, psychological harm or suffering, or economic abuse, including threats of such acts, battery, assault, and dami nito, coercion, harassment, or arbitrary deprivation of liberty. Yung kinukulong, no? It includes, and ito na, limited to, ang dami niya, physical violence, I don't have to explain, sexual violence, which is sexual in nature against a woman or a child, and this includes rape, sexual harassment, acts of lasciviousness, treating a woman or her child as a sex object, making demeaning and sexually suggestive remarks, part na yan, no? physically attacking the sexual parts of the victims, forcing her or him to watch obscene publications and indecent shows or forcing the woman or her child to do indecent acts or make films thereof, forcing the wife and mistress or lover to live in the conjugal home or sleep together in the same room with the abuser. This is better explained by a lawyer, but you have all the parameters there being mentioned. Acts commis, uh, causing or attempting to cause the victim to engage in any sexual activity, pinipilit, no? Para ipalabas, no, tinatakot, that is still part of what we call sexual violence, okay? Oh, pati yung sinasabi nila sa Tagalog pagbubugaw, no, uh, when you prostitute both the woman or the child, no, that is still part of sexual violence. In sexual violence, look at this, it refers to acts or emissions causing or likely to cause mental or emotional anguish or suffering of the victim, but not Limited to intimidation, harassment, stalking, iyan yung iba, no? Inaalam kung saan ka pumupunta, sa sinong kausap mo, anong ginagawa mo, damage to property, public ridicule, pinapahiya, no? Humiliation, repeated verbal abuse and married mental infidelity, no? Psychological violence yan, no? It includes causing or allowing the victim to witness physical or sexual or psychological abuse of a member of the family to which the victim belongs. Pamilya niya yun, no? Uh, pinipilit siyang panuorin kung anong ginagawa, no? Witness pornography or any form or witness abusive injury. Ito yung sa victim. To pets or to... Pati yung pets, no? Or unlawful or unwanted deprivation of the right to custody or visitation of common children. Lahat ng ito is lumped under what they call or we call psychological violence. Economic abuse, ano naman ito, withdrawal of financial support, hindi nagpapadala ng pera. Preventing the victim from engaging in any legitimate profession. Bawal kang magtrabaho dito ka lang sa bahay. No? Occupation, business, or activity, except in cases where the other spouse or partner objects on valid. Of course, kung meron namang valid or serious grounds, maybe may mental issues, gano'n. No? 
deprivation or threat of deprivation of financial resources or the right to the use of employment, of the enjoyment of the conjugal community or property owned in common. Ano to, yung hindi ka pinagtatrabaho, bawal kang magtrabaho, kailangan na uh, hindi ka dito, itong mga ito, no? Hindi pinagagamit yung bahay nilang mag-asawa o magkasama, no? O oh, pati property, hindi lang bahay. When you destroy household property, anong sabi dyan? Economic abuse? Controlling the victims on money? Nasa iyo yung ATM, bawal ibigay. Pag sumeldo, si misis o si mister, siya lang yung nagtatago, no? So, uh, sa babae, hindi binibigay ni lalaki lahat, no? Kailangan uh, sa kanya may hawak. No? When you control the victims on money or property or solely controlling the conjugal money or property, sa inyong dalawa ang property na yun, no? Yung isa dito, battery, no? inflicting physical harm upon the woman or her child, resulting to physical and psychological emotional distress. Ang tawag natin dyan ay battery, no? when you inflict physical harm, and it caused physical and psychological or emotional distress. Yung battered woman syndrome, ano naman ito? No? It refers to a scientifically defined pattern of psychological And behavioral symptom found in women living in battering relationships as a result of cumulative abuse. Very common yung narinig natin dito na kwa, battered women or narinig natin na domestic violence or abuse, no? Domestic abuse. Binubugbog, no? Uh, ng lalaki, no? Sa kanilang relasyon. Araw-araw o every linggo na umuuwi, no? Hindi lang yun, no? Psychological and behavioral symptom ang nangyari na nakita sa babae. Nagkaroon na ng problemang pangkaisipan. No? So pag nagkaroon yan, dahil sa ginagawa because of cumulative abuse, you have your battered woman syndrome. Ito yung stalking refers to intentional, pinagplanuhan, committed by a person who knowingly and without lawful justification follows the woman or her child or places the woman or her child under surveillance directly or indirectly or a combination thereof. So kapag ikaw ay Uh, being stock no pag ikaw ay sinusundan inaalam yung iba nga binibidyo pinipicture pa no that is part of what we call stalking dating relationship refers to a situation where the parties live as husband and wife without the benefit of marriage ang tawag ng iba diyan ay live in no or are romantically involved over time and on a continuing basis during which the uh, during the course of the relationship A casual acquaintance or ordinary socialization between two individuals in a business or social context is not a dating relationship. Nagkita lang sila for that day or merong pinag-usapan, hindi part ng dating relationship. Yan, no? That is cash, ca uh, casual acquaintance no? or ordinary socialization. Itong ito, sinasabi natin, it is involved over a time, matagalan and continuing basis. Sexual relations is any sexual act, single, may or may not result in pregnancy or childbearing of the common child. Uh, wag na ito, hindi naman yan ano, yung safe place or shelter no, sa DSWD yan. Children refers to below 18 years of age. Hindi ko alam ngayon kung nagbago na yung definition kasi ang daming dinadala sa PAP at PGCA at sa mga ibang organisasyon, Philippine Pediatric Society, to comment on the lowering of... Uh, ages with respect to several legal issues. Of course, uh, hindi na ito. No? Uh, ang sinasabi lang dito, the acts of violence against women and children can be committed if you cause physical harm, you threat the, threaten the woman, you attempt to threat the woman or the child physical harm, you place the woman or her child in fear of imminent physical harm. No? Parang may magaganap na no na naka-monitor ka at biglang huhulihin niyo sila or itatago or kikidnapin no that is part of act of violence pa rin no yung mga pinagpaplanuhan ganyan no inflicting or threatening to inflict physical harm on oneself for the purpose of controlling or act ito yung nagse self harm para makontrol mo yung pag hindi ka hindi mo ko binigyan o ganyan ganyan so Parang in a way we call it masochistic, no? Deriving pleasure by actually deriving pleasure because he or she, uh, he wants to control the wife, no? Uh, gagawin niya yon sasaktan niya yung sarili niya, no? 
causing or attempting to cause the woman or child to engage in a sexual activity which does not constitute rape. Halimbawa, pornography, nagpapalabas sila na nakahubad, na ganyan, na pinipilit niyang uh, gawin no? nung, uh, nung uh, babae o ng bata sa harapan or binibigyo ito. No? So, so if you will not do it, you are intimidated or uh, you are forced or uh, there is physical harm. And this is against, uh, directed against the woman or her child and or her or his immediate family. Okay? Tingnan ninyo ito, no? Engaging in purposeful knowing or reckless conduct personally or through under other, the alarms, that alarms or causes substantial emotional or psychological distress to the woman or to the child. This shall include but not be limited to the following. Tingnan niyo itong stalking, no? That is uh, following the woman or child in public or private places. Isa pa, oh, peering in the window or lingering outside the residence of the woman or child. Sinisilip no? sa bintana yung ginagawa o yung uh, uh, pagbabantay mo doon sa babae or doon sa bata or kakalat-kalat ka doon sa vicinity ng pinaninirahan ng bata o ng babae. That is still uh, punishable. Okay. Entering or remaining in the dwelling on the property of the woman, no, ayaw umalis, no, against his, her, her will or his will, no, yung bata, no, destruction of the property, engaging in any form of harassment or violence, ang dami na nito, causing mental or emotional anguish, public ridicule or humiliation to the woman, pati yan, no, that is again uh, part ng violence, ang dami nito, may penalties, I will not discuss much of this kasi, This is more for the court to decide, no? So we can just try to have a glance kung ano itong mga ito, no? So meron siyang uh, sa revised penal code which was crafted sometime in the 1930s and we have had several amendments, no? Uh, revisions of the revised penal code of the Philippines. So dito siya makikita. Sinasabi dito, serious physical injuries can have penalty of prison mayor. Sorry for the, hindi siya prison. Prison for less serious physical, prison correctional. and slight physical injuries by arresto mayor. Itong mga to will be determined by the court depending on how uh, the, the uh, uh, problem was uh, crafted and the effect to the woman. No? You can uh, put the person in prison for one month or six months to, to six years or six years to, uh, to uh, 12 years, 12 years to 20 years. So ito yung mga sinasabi dito. Ito yung mga iba't ibang Uh, those acts shall be punished by imprisonment of two degrees lower than the prescribed penalty for the consummated. Pag nangyari, no, uh, hindi ko na i-discuss itong mga ito, uh, pang-abogado. Suffice it to say na there are uh, sections that show that these are punishable and can be punished by the different um, number of years or months that you can be incarcerated without prejudice to paying, no? So, I think yun lang yung ating gustong i-discuss dito. Hindi na ito, no? Mga ano na ito, partial. Kasi we're just talking about the VAW. These are actually the salient provisions of what the Republic Act has actually be given to us. Ito na, yung role ng DSWD is very, very important. Ito yung sinasabi dito, restitution, iba, kabayaran ng mga ginawa Pagbabayaran, medical expense, na hospital, childcare expense, na walang ka ng trabaho, kukita, babayaran lahat yun nung gumawa sa yun, nung yung gumawa. Meron pa tayo dito na ito, if you're a healthcare provider, response to abuse, you should report. No? Sino itong mga to Physicians, nurses, clinician, BHWs, therapist or counselor, who suspects abuse or has been informed of the violence shall properly document the victim's physical, emotional, or psychological injuries, properly record any victim's suspicion, observations. Pwede yung mga nandito na worker, automatically provide the victim free of charge a medical certificate concerning the examination or visit. Sabi ko nga last time, medical certification is issued only by a medical uh, doctor. So you can probably issue uh, certification, uh, not necessarily we call it medical, but for those that are appropriate to your training. Ito po yun. So, pwede tayo lahat dito na merong ganitong capacity or capability to render service to people who are victims of 
violence. So, yun lang po yung gusto kong i-discuss. Magandang umaga po muli sa inyong lahat. Good morning to everyone. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Guanzon, for that very enlightening and very informative presentation. And also for providing us the context about how to be gender sensitive and gender responsive, as well as get practical understanding of related laws to help avoid or prevent gender-based gender violence. Yes, sir. Before we proceed to the Q&A, do you know that our participants are not only from Metro Manila area or nearby provinces? We also have somebody watching from Sydney, Australia and from Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Wow, wow. Okay, shall we now proceed to our Q&A? Dr. Gonzon, please be yes. ready. So our first question is from Dr. Marieta Subida. And her question is, how do we implement gender sensitization in education? Um, I, I, do, I, I do not know if you really mean sensitization or sensitivity when you mean gender sensitization is hindi lang awareness ito, no? everybody should be practicing it. So there are, of course, how do we implement, of course, uh, uh, CHED requirement po yan sa mga state universities and colleges that you must have your GAD program. So I think including uh, institutions higher uh, of higher learning, they are required. So how do you implement, as I said before, then you we must have our gender policies or gender mainstreaming. No, We look at, as I said, you can look at your policies, you can look at the people, you can look at the program. So when we try to assess Tingnan natin kung are we delivering what it is all about. But before we can deliver gender and sensitivity, which I said is gender mainstreaming dapat, we must understand what we intend to achieve. So we try to look at what outcomes. For example, in your office, ah, maganda naman kasi there is a merry mix of male and female, including the third gender na pwedeng makapasok. Mukhang you are doing Pero it's not enough of doing that, no implementing. It must be institutionalized. Kailangan merong sa inyong sariling rules and regulations or policies na may access, equal access is given to all candidates. So pag nakita natin siya na institutionalized, hindi lang siya implemented. Kasi after institutionalization, then you monitor it, you implement, monitor, and evaluate. Are we doing well? So, dun po yung ano, ma'am, uh, ma Marietta, no? Uh, then we can say we are implementing it. So, we accept people on the basis of their capacity, capability, skills. It's nothing to do with both sex and gender roles. That is the time we can say we are implementing and that is how to implement. You evaluate the different aspects in the educational sector. Yung mga tao, yung mga programa, yung polisiya, at even yung outcome. And then you survey people, kumusta ba kayo? Okay ba? Wala bang nagiging barrier? I think that's uh, my, my, my take on that question, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from Miss Araceli Salivio of the Accounting Department. Papaano naman po yung mga lalaki naman ang naaabuso? May batas po women's protection against abuse. Pero madami din pong lalaki na naaabuso. Uh, unfortunately, I am not a lawyer, so I am not aware of a batas on, on the male. Pero you can you can uh, get to, uh, sa akin, ang dalawang approach mo dyan ay una, uh, you can use the physical injuries, meron dyan sa revised penal code, serious or less serious. And of course, may crime na bullying, uh, that is also uh, uh, punishable. And kung mag yan, then you can have problems uh, probably of psychological incapacity along that line. Pero specifically, uh, if there are lawyers listening who may probably want to give their own point of view, I am not aware as to men protection. No? Uh, kasi yung ating vow is only 
for male or uh, male children or female children. Pero yung, yung other side ng coin, yung babae. So, it is true kasi I also have uh, handled cases na uh, male abuse. No, It's the wife who is abusing the male. No, And unfortunately, that particular case uh, uh, produced um, separation on the basis of psychological incapacity from the female. So, hindi ko na alam yung binigay na penalty ng court doon sa wife na gumagawa nun sa kanyang husband. So, if anybody is in the know, maybe we can share it in public. Okay. Thank you for that. I think itong susunod na from Dr. Padulina. The question is coming from Dr. President Padulina. Why is the law only against violence against women how about violence against men is it that against gender sensitivity that that is very true ma'am president in fact uh, the only reason i could think of why it's violence against women because practically all statistics reports and anecdotes and studies show the women were the ones on the receiving end both uh historically and up to now. So because of uh, the development and changes in our society, culture, and mores, mas agresibo na ngayon ang iba no, na babae. Lalaki ngayon ang nagkakaproblema kasi sila na ngayon ang on the receiving end. So if I may, of course that is, kaya nga nagkaroon dito na gender and sensitivity, kailangan may equal access and equal protection clause. So, part of that gender sensitivity issue now that where you have violence against men will be reporting, collating, and finding out so that this can be addressed. In fact, that is one of the agenda for God. Eh? It will have equal access and protection to the male, female, and even in the third gender. So, that is still gender sensitivity. But the violence committed by women against men that has to be looked into based on evidences so that they can they uh the legislative no the legislature can craft a law to address this kaya nga maganda nagkaroon tayo ng god kasi we now see the other side of the coin mukhang may ganitong emerging problem and this has also be has to be addressed pero i am sure in the university uh, we have our, our own uh, uh, rules and regulation that is not uh, related to gender. You use it for, for example, uh, 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 maybe in uh, for the students, ang penalty across the sexes, kunyari may ninakaw ka na libro o may siniraan ka. No? So, hindi siya talaga directed against men. No? May specific laws na to cover it up to cover it rather so yun ang alam ko so basically uh, finally we have to look at the evidences we have to uh, uh what they call this um lump them up uh, study it so that we can present it to our congressmen and our senators na we need also to craft such things like this tulad ng ginawa nilang paternity leave no to balance yung ano no yung child rearing, nagkaroon tayo ng paternity leave. That is true, ma'am, no? That's why gender sensitivity is a good tool kasi we now see may problema palang ganito. We present it to our legislature. Kailangan yung mag-craft ng batas kasi mukhang pang women ang, ang, lang, ang, at saka children ang ginagamit. Paano naman yung domestic violence or violence against men? I agree, ma'am, na we need to craft a better law if there is already a law on this. Pero I am not kasi po privy as to recent development pagdating sa mga pata sa violence against men. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, there's another question here from Ms. Marilu Yap. Uh, Mar what is the difference between gender equity, gender equality, and women empowerment? Uh, I think that was discussed a while ago. But anyway, gender equity, uh, didiscuss ko kanina yun, di ba? Pag sinabi kasing gender equity, you give a resource, let's go po na sa equality, no? Sa equality, for example, you give 10,000 for someone to join the contest, you give everybody 10,000, regardless of how much money they have. 
But in gender equity, yung mayaman, bigyan mo ng 10,000, yung estudyante, for example, na wala namang real source, scholar, bibigyan mo siya ng 20. So that is equitable distribution. You distribute on the basis of the need of the person. Yun yung difference ng equity sa equality. Yung women empowerment, of course, parang from from its uh, um, what they call this uh, definition alone, they are not marginalized. They are given the voice. They are given access, equal access to males or even uh, uh, maybe even um, the third gender. Pwede rin sila. So when we empower women, we give them the ability to rule themselves. Ano yung mga wishes nila? Like, I want to go into medicine. Bawal na yung dati. Kailangan lalaki ka. May mga ganyan noong unang panahon eh. So when we empower them, we let women self-actualize what they intend to do. Pwede akong mag-driver, maski babae ako, kasi marunong akong magpatakbo, mag-park, at umiwas sa disgrasa. That is empowering them, letting the people know na we can deliver the goods, we can do it. Hindi lang sila basta nanonood. And then there is equitable distribution of personnel, men and women, women and men, in a certain unit, in a certain department. That's when we say they have been empowered. Okay. Uh, maybe this will be the last question, Dr. Guanzon. Uh, from Claudette Nugid, what is your best suggestion or steps in putting up GAD program for students and employees In, cons in conservative universities or Catholic schools? Okay, before you put up a God program, you need to have a dialogue with the stakeholders. And the most important stakeholder will be the university or the school administration, whether they are conservative, liberated, no, or updated, if I may. So you consult with them. Uh, this is what gender and sense de gender and development is all about we are still operating on the basis for 1970s policy with regards to something that is parallel to this we propose this how do you view this so we intend to have such policy we have our expected outcome this is our objective we ask the administrators ano naman ang take ninyo? Uh, how do you view this? Does it make sense or is it too empowering or it's too constricting for certain sectors? Kasi at the end of the day, your God will not succeed if your administrators will not say yes to it. Kailangan we convince them that it is for everyone and the betterment of the institution. Not only on finances but the image And, uh, kasi importante ang imahe pag sinabi mong ito ka, group, o sa siyensya i virtud, okay yan, dyan tayo. Kasi they practice their logo. no They preach and practice their logo. So they are updated. They want to develop. They consult people, especially the stakeholders. Then after do, maybe even presenting that, you look at the students or the student tree. No? Palagay ninyo... Of course, it's not always necessary to follow. No, look at their perspectives. No, tignan niyo yung kanilang priorities, prerogatives, and thoughts. What do you think about these guys or girls? No, anong tingin niyo? And then maybe after, sabi ko nga you can do a random survey. In now you can even survey the faculty, kasi ang faculty nyo magkung. Nako, nako, sir. Sobra na yan. Masyado ng ano? Awain na kami. So tignan din natin, because everybody should be consulted. And then let the administration float it. Ang sinasabi ko, tignan natin in one, two, three years or even five years. Tignan natin kung ano yung magiging resulta. Are we progressing? Are we addressing correctly what the government or what the world wants to achieve no? in empowering women or giving, sabi ko nga, hindi lang equity, giving justice and liberation. No? Tanggalin na yung mga barriers. If we remove that, we liberate our people, we give them equal access, we give both the administrators and those being administered at or with what will make them be a good contributor for the development of the university. And at the end of the day, when they are now working outside of the university, 
which is at the truest measure of how successful we are, kung sila ba ay inclusive kapag gumawa ng trabaho nila, they do not, um, for example, marginalize people, they do not care about the socioeconomic status, successful ang CEO kasi nakapagprodukto tayo ng mga professionals na nanggaling sa atin na marunong kumilala ng batas, marunong kumilala ng pag-iisa ng lipunan. We are all in it together, sabi nga ng COVID. We heal as one, so we march as one. Pag nakita natin yon, na ipipresent natin actually yan, na ito po ang aming ultimate objective sa administration, if we convince them, we won the first fight. The second fight is carrying it out, and then the third fight is uh, institutionalizing, and then the fourth part is making an analysis, and then the last part is looking at the best practices to propel this program. Wow. Thank you for that very comprehensive answer. Uh, at this point, uh, we shall now be giving our e-certificate of appreciation to Dr. Guanzon. Thank you, Pa. Thank so, you. Can you please uh, show the certificate of appreciation? May I read? Okay. So, may I read Central Scholar University Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Dr. Ricardo Sotelo Guanzon for sharing his time and experience as a resource speaker in a webinar entitled Gender Sensitivity held on December 5, 2020 via FB Workplace live stream. Sign, Teresa R. Perez, PhD, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Bella Marie L. Fabian, PhD, Assistant Vice President for Administration and OIC for the Human Resource Department. And Maria Cristina D. Padolina, PhD, President and Chief Academic Officer, Centro Scolar University. Let's give a virtual warm round of applause to Dr. Guanzon. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Chit. And I would like to thank the university administration. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, to formally close our webinar, may I now call our now on our Vice President for Academic Affairs for her closing message. Please welcome Dr. Teresa R. Perez. Good morning, everyone. Indeed, it has been a well-spent morning for all of us. The topic is very meaningful and very relevant. We have been hearing about uh, gender issues but we don't really go deep into the understanding of this issue. We need to get our facts straight from the scientific point of view. So therefore, this morning, we are very grateful for our speaker who accepted our invitation and he talked about gender sensitivity. Thank you, Dr. Ricardo Gonzon. You have fed you. our minds today and Welcome. made us reflect on the enormousness and breadth of this topic. Really, it's a very, very big, big topic. Yesterday, uh, I went over CMO number one, series 2015, which is actually the springboard of uh, this webinar. And uh, it is a 32-page document that was, has a very comprehensive discussion on this issue also. And all of this was uh, confirmed this morning by you, Dr. Guanzon. So gender and development encompasses all the trilogical functions of the higher education institutions that is instruction research and extension and of course um dr guanson mentioned also that it's a program for the entire <laughs> university so instruction should fulfill respect for the rights of uh, women protection against violence and discrimination and i think ceu uh are uh, is be, uh, are addressing 
this concern through our social science courses, especially when uh, citizenship is discussed. Uh, gender equality, I know, is integrated uh, in courses where applicable uh, in social sciences and even in, I think, in our social work. And uh, our social sciences department also um, uh, have courses, uh, general education courses, and portion of this. I think are are being taken care of. However, this is not enough. That we have training and develop knowledge and comprehension on the topics, but we also need the university to commit to gender responsive researches, such as gender and development, women empowerment, respect for human rights, and others. So maybe this is something uh, that uh, our research uh, uh, office would. Uh, look into extension programs also should focus on protection on social protection and uh, appropriate technology for women uh, i know that a gender responsive extension should be informative persuasive um, emancipatory uh, formative and participatory decision making that would uh, eliminate gender disparities and this could be in the form of technology transfer, livelihood programs, and advocacy. So I think advocacy is very important, especially for our students. Okay, so uh, eventually, as mentioned by Dr. Guanson this morning also, we transform from God aware, so because we are aware at this time, to God practicing. So I think that is where we would want to go to. I would like to take also this opportunity to show our appreciation again to our speaker, Dr. Guanson. You have enlightened all of us. The working committee, mostly from the HR department, as I see it. And of course, to our ABP, Bel Fabian, who spearheaded this webinar. I would like to thank also the technical people who made this virtual get-together possible. Mr. Jun Ayran and his company. So, of course, I would like to thank also our audiences, our audience where in, uh, in Facebook, YouTube, Workplace, uh, our students, faculty members, non-teaching staff, our middle managers, and of course, even the, the top management who took time out from their busy schedule to attend this webinar. It was really, really a... Uh, uh, learning in rich experience that uh, we had this morning. We spend time in sessions like this, and as always, at the end of the day, we are fulfilled for we learned a lot. Once again, it has been a fruitful morning. I pray that we continue to stay safe and healthy and make part of our advocacy gender issues. Thank you. Blessings to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Perez. Uh, I think Dr. Guanson would like to say something. Dr. Uh, Guanson? Yeah, yes, well, actually, I, I wish to thank everyone in the CEO administration for the honor of being invited to talk with you. A little very brief anecdote. I lived in Sampaloc before, and I used to mm -hmm. pass by Centro Escolar. Uh, and uh, I, I was looking at it with great admiration. Several of my cousins and relatives graduated there. And I remember, maybe you don't know, ma'am, no? When I was still in the elementary, the former, the then Miss Philippines, Miss Fortune Aleta was Central Escolar University graduate. Nagproduso kayo ng Miss Philippines nung ako ay grade 6. Hindi ko siya makalimutan kasi neighbor po sila. Ang ganda-ganda ho niya. Kaya tingin ko lahat na tiga si Iyo, magaganda. Ako? Really? Yes, ma'am. So I stayed in Earn Show before. That's where I stayed when I was in Manila. So maraming maraming salamat, ma'am. Yung pinapanood ko noon na universidad pag naglalakad ako, eto na, no, kasama nila ako ngayon. That is after 64 years. Next time, Dr. Guanson, you will do it live in our auditorium. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Tuwan-tuwa lang ako talaga. Natinitignan ko lang siya, no? Now, here I am with... Thank you, Ma'am Chiet, no, for inviting me, no, na she believed in me. Actually po, Ma'am President and Ma'am VP, ang dami hong slide na nakaprepare. Kaya lang sabi ko, ibibigay ko na lang ho sa inyo yung mga... Kasi iba galing sa PCW, 
they are actually sharing. I'll give it para marami po kayong resources. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. God bless By the po. way, yes ma'am, my university president, Dr. Uh, Shirley Castaneda Agrupis, wishes to thank you as well for giving us the privilege to send out his his dean to talk with you. Tuwan-tuwa po siya nung nalaman niya. Maraming okay. salamat din daw po. Salamat po. Sige po. Ma Goodbye po. At, uh, Just tag me na, Dr. Guanson. When ma'am, uh, nasaya at uh, Ilocano kay Gaya no? <laughs> when ma'am, taga Sinai, Ilocano Ilonggo up ma'am. <laughs> Sige po, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat and it's been a very productive morning for me. Thank you once again. I pray for the safety of everyone. Let us stay safe, keep safe, be good, and Merry Christmas to the CEU family. Okay, thank you, Dr. Guanzon. Thank you, Dr. Padulina, Dr. Perez. Thank you, everyone, for attending today's <laughs> webinar on gender sensitivity. You would see on the screen the link for the evaluation. We would appreciate if you would complete that and provide your feedback. You will also receive your e-certificate after you have submitted your evaluation. Again, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat for joining us today. And have a great rest of your day. Hello, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mabuhay ka, mahal namin pamantasan, mapuri sa nakilang sentro eskolar. Ika'y dambana ng pag-ibig sa bayan At taghaw na sa riyang matagumpay Kapag ang diwa ng iyong mga hibig Umago na sa puso't ibig Sabay-sabay na ipasisigawan Mabuhay ka dakilang sentro Mabuhay ka, mahal namin pamantasan, papuri sa dakilang sentro eskolar. Ika'y dambana ng pag-ibig sa bayan, at ang kong nasa liyang matagumpan. Sentro eskolar, sentro eskolar.